Jim, can you reach out for me? Please. Okay, we'll start with the public portion. Uh, Zachary Cohen. Thank you very much, Francis. Thank you, trustees. Uh, I'm here uh, representing the Nature Reserve Committee. Uh, I've been here several, you know, many, many times over the past years for fairly similar reasons, which is uh, we've prepared a management plan that we did a presentation to the town board last Tuesday, and um, uh, one of the neighbors, that then important neighbors of these properties on Oyster Shore Road is the trustee bottomlands and the and uh, that cove, and uh, while it is true that we've had some good input from uh, especially Jim Grimes, who, who's a trustee member of the Nature Reserve Committee, and, and Rick Whalen, um, I always like to have the full committee know about it and what the issues are, and there have been some issues that came up at the presentation with the town board and give you a chance to weigh in. Um, I'm not sure yet whether the town board is gonna try to resolve the issues before going to public comment or, or go to a public hearing and then resolve them. Um, probably beforehand is of course better. Uh, so all I'm doing tonight, because I just have to be up at Springs CAC at seven, is just uh, introduce to you a couple of the issues. Uh, you can always contact uh, Jim or me or Rick uh, for more explanation and then hopefully I can come back uh, on, I guess, December 11th and uh, have a actual discussion and hopefully if you decide you, if you want to write something formally or not. Um, as you know, we've done this in the past. Um, what, and of course, it's not every issue that necessarily concerns the trustees, but and since a number of the, uh, I would say the, the conceptual uh, issue when, when we looked at this, uh, these two properties, and here they are, this is Oyster Shores Road, and then this is South Pond, um, was basically uh, how do you balance you know, it's CPF purchases, which uh, say that you're supposed to manage uh, the property for public use and enjoyment with uh, environmental protections and also sensitivity to the neighbors, and it is purchased in, um, there is a, a, a neighborhood uh, property owners association. Uh, some of the issues that have come up, so I think you may be aware there was the remnants of a dock, which actually had rights to be fairly long, uh, that was pretty quickly determined that it, that'd be removed. And, but then the other, uh, some of the other issues um, we can see is the, uh, it's one of those properties that actually whether we liked it or not, was being often mowed down all the way down to the water, and uh, fairly nice views have been maintained, uh, which I'll move to and show you some of those. And usually, so the question came, these seem to be a, a benefit, but at the same time, we're gonna have to develop protections for a runoff, and um, the, the, the general view is, uh, since we removed houses, and there's a lot of essentially dirt initially, uh, in most of the areas that had been um, already developed by buildings or gardens, we tend to try to get a native grassland going. Uh, our view was that the grassland will generally provide sufficient filtering of water since the roads, except at the northern and southern extreme, any runoff's gonna be 125 to 150 feet away in terms of from the road. Uh, there was, in discussion with the planning department, uh, they wanted a 50-foot woody buffer. Uh, we wrote in a 10-foot with 
a 10 foot uh, minimum, but done in such a way as to preserve the views. And so that's one of the issues to look at. There were a couple of areas where the Phragmites have been kept clear. We usually take a kind of liberal view that if they've been maintained, if we inherit it, buy it as cleared, that we have the right to you know, just go in and continue to keep those areas clear of Phragmites, and that's in the plan. Uh, obviously, we need DEC approval to expand that, um, which would be nice to do, but of course, there are a lot of other projects. Is that something <coughs> to look at? Um, one sec. <coughs> So, just taking, getting an idea. Yes, so, no? There we go, okay. So yeah, so this gives you an idea of the state they were in. Uh, we had already uh, seeded them, uh, though most of this was grass, we inherited. You can kind of see the cut where the Phragmites was. It's already starting to grow back, unfortunately. Um, but you can also see that this clearly needs some kind of protection, uh, even though uh, runoff may come from very far away, it's, it's definitely uh, too exposed down close to the water. And Can we ask questions as you go along? Of, of course. Do you plan on fertilizing that? No, and this is one of the issues where I was very happy um, Rick Whalen pointed it out, I believe Jim probably pointed it out, and Peter Vinskoyak at the presentation pointed out that the town code that says you need a 50-foot woody buffer is, was designed for developed properties where you don't know how close to the water you may be developing pollutants and fertilizers and stuff. Mm -hmm. And we, we, not only that, when we do the mowing, we mow about six inches high, we leave the grass clippings down because it's too expensive to take them away. So there's a, in my opinion, having seen a number of preserves that don't even have the grasslands, um, it's far less likely for water to run through a, a, a well-developed grassland than it is through some woody trees that often, like cedars, I find very little grows in between them, and the runoff can often just go right, you know, right through them. So, um, but that's exactly the right question, Brian, and that, that was our point of view. And Peter Van Skoyak picked up on that and asked that question at the Tuesday session. Um, and, And so this again shows, this is how we have gotten it. And a, and a principle that served us well for, since I've been on the preser Nature Preserve Committee 15 years is we usually when we get a property, if it's got native vegetation along the shoreline, we don't remove it to make views. But we do get an occasional property that has views. It's a nice amenity and we try to see is there a way to solve any of the other issues while, while keeping that available. Um, so that's one of the things I'm asking you to take a look at, and I want obviously the trustees to feel comfortable um, with whatever their priorities are and, and that they feel it's environmentally protected. And uh, there are some questions of access to, uh, we, I feel pretty strongly, and I think the committee did, that there should be a trail down on uh, you know, both of the properties and they should be connected and should be fairly easy to, it, it should be fairly easy to um, walk down and access the water. Um, I'm not too worried about, from my experience, overuse of the property. Uh, you've got the Kathy Lester Preserve 400, 500 feet away across the cove. Um, if I'm going to take my canoe out, I'd rather only carry it 20 feet from the end of the road to Kathy Lester than 150 feet here. But it's always nice to, to have the ability. What we usually find over the years is that when it first happens, the neighbors are usually quite concerned because they see it as so special, and it is, but the, what they don't see is how many dozens of other preserves we have and that 
it's 90% uh, of the users will probably come from people walking up and down the street, but we always like to make sure the whole town uh, has that ability. So that's what I'm asking you, and you can ask any questions. And, um, you know, I'm gonna speak to Fred Overton, who's our liaison, and see if he wants to try to move it forward, what Larry Cantwell's view is in December, or whether they're just gonna say to wait till January, but I'm hoping you'll feel ready and I'll come back on December 11th. But if you have any immediate questions, yeah. Uh, what is the plant list for the buffer area? <laughs> um, it was essentially, it's gonna be what grows in. And that's part of the thing. See, one of the issues we we're trying to, and some of the differences opinion here, there's a third property we bought with this over here, the end of the road, and we didn't include it because it's neighbored by nature reserves and we feel that natural, um, uh, like uh, um, high tide bush and things like that may jump over. Uh, we're always a little less sure on properties like this that have developed properties as neighbors. And it's not, in my opinion, worth the effort to be bringing in vegetation. You know, we have so many hundreds and hundreds of preserves. So what was gonna happen at first is we're gonna <coughs> see what, what comes back. Mm -hmm. And Rick, this is one of those cases where one, the houses have been demolished the wells have, did, have been removed. Everything, there is no infrastructure to maintain mm -hmm. any revegetation of the property um, to begin with. And the proposal right now is to just stop mowing. What's happened there in the past is they mowed a lawn right down to the water, is to just stop mowing that. In all likelihood, you're gonna see the groundsel bush and the iva and things like that are gonna start to start to reestablish on their own. There's some portions of these properties that were minimally disturbed in the past that there are vestiges of like woodland wildflowers and stuff there. The only detriment to them honestly right now is the actual browse pressure by the existing deer population. Right. You know, and one of the things that's in this management plan is a mention about deer exclosures and that was written in primarily in the event that uh, either nature preserve or natural resources, if they wanna try and encourage this native plant community to thrive, they may wanna temporarily fence it to try and see if it, it can, can recover on around. its own. Yeah. What about making the buffer just a little bit wider? I mean, 10 feet's pretty narrow. And you know, some salt outs and some things that. Rick, you know, this is one of those properties that if you look at this as though we're building a house on the property, there's all the more incentive to provide some sort of buffer. But the fact of the matter is, the residences have been removed, okay? So this is a situation where right now they are grassland on a manufactured basis. And with the seasonal mowing at six inches, if some native cedars, other vegetation begins to grow, it's easy enough for them to avoid those and let these areas recover in a more natural fashion. Mm -hmm. So I understand planning's you know, incentive that every other property we ask for a 50 foot buffer, but you already have a 175 foot buffer. You know, all, all that's happening here is the existing grass area is being mowed primarily to keep out some of the invasives, which are already, you know, keep suppress them, which are already on the property. And quite honestly, you know, what Zach mentioned earlier, if you're looking for something that's gonna truly mitigate stormwater runoff, gra a well-established grassland, um, the efficacy of that, that you know, system's ability to remove contaminants is exponentially better than, let's say, a shrub buffer. So, you know, it's kind of an argument the town makes frequently, but, you know, like science doesn't necessarily support it, and I get it when somebody's developing a house and they're trying to keep fertiliz fertilizers and highly maintained uh, pl you know, plants away from the area, but this is a case here where this has been left to go back to nature. 
Nobody's watering it, nobody's fertilizing it. Right. This is only gonna sustain with the land, you know, and the annual rainfall is gonna sustain here. So I don't agree with planning's request and I'm just gonna jump in and, and say that perhaps we might wanna rethink that because if we look at our, our waterways that are pretty much clear of, of development around them, such as Fresh Pond and Northwest Creek, we know we've got water quality problems. And then we look at things like Hope Pond and Georgica Pond, which have a lot of grass, maybe more fertilizers than might be proposed here, but again, we have water quality issues. So again, perhaps going the extra mile and looking at additional buffers, buffers would not be such a bad thing mm -hmm. when we've got an opportunity to do so. Well, we carefully wrote into the plan minimum 10 feet because the expectation is since the town is managing it, they will make intelligent decisions as to what's needed. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I pointed out, for example, at the hearing that two places where I feel the buffer has to, almost definitely will know the buffer needs to be denser is the, um, the, the northern corner and the southern corner, for example, down here, since there's a good chance that we're gonna get a very, very large house next door one day, and they may have a garden and things like that, that's an area, now you're talking about, instead of the pollution being potentially from a road 125, 175 feet away, so then the intelligent thing is the people managing it, saying we, may, we have to make sure we have a denser buffer there, the view isn't so important there anyway. Same up on the north where you're closer t to Pond Road, and part of the view again goes to the sense of um, how detailed can you make a management plan um, w uh, of implementation when you're dealing with nature and you aren't doing landscape design. You you aren't uh, you don't have the money and the the manpower and woman power. Say from Michelle. Uh, Carlson, who does a lot of this help on the nature reserve, to go out and say, okay, so we're gonna plant this and we're gonna put these in and that. And so um, I think you have to state your goals and then trust that the goals will be implemented in the, in the best balance. Okay, with saying that, looking at your paragraph five management goals and issues, mm -hmm. rather than saying the footpath or two to access the shore, from the road edge may be maintained on a regular basis? Oh, it should say. Will uh, be. Yeah, it should be will, will be. Will be maintained mm -hmm. for the public access to those two properties. Otherwise, it makes no sense to spend, what was it? One. Uh, close one, to three million. Actually, yeah, more, 3.9 million. That's a good point. Yeah, 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 no, no, no. Yeah. The, yeah. Uh, the local neighborhood's reaction yeah. to this purchase. Yeah. yeah. So not everybody in the neighborhood. Yep, and then I just. I've had support also from the And then just in glancing through this really quick, um, in the, uh, gosh, what is it? Paragraph six, the restrictions, number four and letter B, a lack of eyewitness testimony. I mean, great concept, but technically, is it really enforceable to say uh, that if you don't see the problem, we had to so take that's boil, that's boilerplate that's put in from yeah. the uh, attorney's office. Yeah, it's not. A, we okay. didn't write that. They the, wrote that. The attorney. That's part of the litter code that came in. I believe in December of twenty. I don't know. Was it was fifteen or sixteen. It was a while ago. But okay. the they the the attorney's office uh, revised the litter ordinance, you may wanna, if you're not familiar with it, you may wanna look into it, because they revised the litter ordinance. It, uh, here, it's, uh, um, it's restriction for A and B. And, and that was just taken verbatim from the new, ta new town code. Uh, I'd like probably to find out if they've been able to enforce so. that anywhere yet. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's a great idea, but yeah, it opens up. The, yeah, that's where, that, that's where that came from, and we've actually sent them, we haven't gotten the action on it a long time ago, that in some ways it needs to broaden and things, because they didn't think about the f things such as 
in their definition of litter, we have some worries that it doesn't quite include personal property like abandonment of, of, of old canoes and other things like that. And, and you know, I'd like to see that looked at uh, with, with some of those issues. Uh, by the way, I do, not why you, I do not know why you would put that provision in the management plan. That's a legal provision. It goes in your town code. It doesn't go in your management plan. If you want, doesn't go in the management. If you want plan. to take that up, I'll be. <laughs> doesn't go in the management. Plan. That's ridiculous. It's, it's fine by me, Rick. If you want to, if you want to take that up, but it's we used to, as you know, we used to just say littering was prohibited. But yeah, and you reference the town code when the issue fine. arises. Okay, you're not prosecuting somebody under the management plan. You're yeah. going to prosecute them under the town code. Okay, so I'd be happy to do that. So is this, right. is this technically one of the generic management plans? No, 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 no. No, no, this, no is this, specific. Is, this is specific okay. to, to those two the properties. Property. So I got to run. If you, this I have is, one more question. Yeah, this, this okay. is mild compared to the Springs DC. We're discussing cell phone coverage in the Springs <laughs> in, <Okay>. as well as. <laughs> no, I'm just looking at page 12, <laughs> your photographs. And I do see a significant amount of fencing and probably the hay bales with the black stuff to prevent the wash the off yeah oil. yeah but well let's be specific let's, yes. let's not put it in the management plan if it's not going to be there going forward that's a good Get point we should out. update update the photo yeah okay update the okay. photo because yeah those were there because um yeah and we we needed to protect uh the 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 water the water f yeah yes. during those processes is right and right. things. But we want to make sure they don't stay there because we need our footpaths to get down to the water. Okay. All okay. right. Well, <laughs> it's always my pleasure to come here. <laughs> always and, a pleasure to see you. And uh, hopefully I'll be invited back in t on the 11th and we'll see where what you want to do about this. Okay. Thank you, Zachary. No, thank you. All right. Uh, Sarah Davison. Thank you very much, Sarah Davison from Friends of Georgia Capon Foundation. The Pond Committee asked me to give you a quick uh, update on uh, the goings on at Georgia Capon, and I'm happy to do that today. I uh, wanted to say that a lot of the results are not in yet for some of the studies, so we'd love to make a more thorough and final report for 2017 early in the new year. But uh, suffice it to say that um, to start out, 2017 uh, turned out to be an excellent year for the water quality of Georgia Capon. The dissolved oxygen levels were high. There was no anoxia. Uh, there were no summer fish kills. There was no macroalgae bloom. And there was only one week of a blue-green algae bloom. And if you compare that to past years, that's really quite a significant improvement. Um, and um, we're all very happy about that. We did uh, repeat the aquatic weed harvester experiment uh, in 2017, so the second year of data are now available. Um, the growth of the aquatic weeds, and macroalgae, and other species was way down this year. And on June 1st, uh, the first harvester arrived. We had requested a smaller harvester this year that would be more uh, able to navigate the shallow creeks of the pond. And so uh, on, on June 1st, this, this arrived, and it's pr the oldest prototype of an aquatic weed harvester known to man arrived at Georgica Pond and uh, quickly broke down, and a second harvester had to arrive to replace it. Um, this one was no spring chicken either and had its problems, but it did get through the summer. And uh, we had two great operators this year, students of Dr. Gobler at the Gobler Lab at Stony Brook. So the results of the harvest uh, compared to last year uh, 
There were, again, with the mechanical difficulties, uh, there were fewer harvest days, but in 2016, 55,740 pounds of aquatic plant material were harvested and taken to the recycling center for composting. And Goldler's analysis revealed that that removed 13% of the nitrogen load uh, in the summer months and 23% of the phosphorus load in the summer. And that he considered that very significant. Um, in 2017, the results, uh, as you would imagine, were down. First, the growth was down, but the harvest days were more limited. So only 32,700 pounds of plant material was removed, again, taken to the dump for composting. And then that represented 6% of the nitrogen load and 12% of the phosphorus load. So, you know, I think it just, the data correlates to the effort, but it also may correlate to the, the lower amount of material in the pond. And um, Dr. Goldberg's working on the final report for this, which, he, you know, we will be sending to you. Um, we're encouraged by the results of the harvester. We do think it's helping the uh, water quality, and so we do plan to uh, repeat the experiment uh, next year with your support. Another initiative at the pond, as, as uh, everybody knows by now, that the nitrogen from septic systems is the number one source of nitrogen input into the pond through groundwater seepage, and that's 50% of the nitrogen entering the pond is coming from uh, septic systems. So mm. we're very excited that the first uh, low nitrogen septic system was installed earlier in the year uh, on the west side of the pond in the Georgica Association. And these are, th this is one of the tank systems. They're very complex compared to your old single septic, gravity-fed septic tank. And you have the aeration part, well, of course, nitrogen enters the tank as, as urine and, or urea, and it gets aerated uh, in an oxygenating tank, and it becomes nitrates, nitri nitrate, NO2 and NO3, and then it goes into an anaerobic, a, a no oxygen um, system, and it gets moved around and it escapes as harmless nitrogen gas. So really quite amazing uh, chemistry, uh, but it, it requires a lot of technology, uh, you know, quite a bit more expense, and um, you know, there are about four other systems uh, in the planning stages, and you know, with high water tables at Georgica Pond and uh, large homes, it's, it's turning out to be, you know, rather expensive. Um, and of course, uh, we're committed to getting every home uh, around the pond upgraded, but my initial enthusiasm for getting it done within a year or whatever, I don't remember what I said, but it's, it's not gonna happen, but it is uh, eventually gonna happen because we're very serious about making it. Yes, Brian. Sarah, what is the uh, cost, if you know, for this type of septic system? Well, this was, uh, you, you, this is a large house. Right. And um, so they had to put in two sets of tanks okay. and then a number of drain fields. So it was really quite expensive. It's, you know, a lot more than the $16,000 rebate. Okay. You know, it was, oh, it was $70,000. Wow, all right. <clears throat> but it was the first one that was done. You know, the vendors were, you know, took longer. And, mm -hmm. you know, a as these things get put in, I'm sure the costs will come down. It'll be easier. Um, and, you know, not every home, you know, I mean, are, you know, town-wide, they're not all this large, so you oh. can use just one tank. How many homes are around the pond? In the 75 are on pond the front. Bordering the pond, thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. There are 300 homes in the two-year groundwater travel time. It, that is what happens in that, um, and that's our top priority for the septic, because that has the most impact. Thank you. Another impact to the water quality uh, uh, is stormwater runoff, much less than um, septic system, but uh, thanks to a real push by the village, um, Drew Bennett has drawn up a plan for ameliorating this very long, very old pipe at Cove Hollow Road. And you know, we all know that having a pipe directly discharge into a pond is, is not what you want anymore. That's old technology. And so 
Drew Bennett's plan calls for diverting more of the water out of the pipe along its course and installing even more filters to filter out pathogens and nitrogen um, and uh, from the from the stormwater running through this pipe. Um, and the CPF uh, committee has uh, recommended this to the town board for funding, and so we're pretty excited about that. Um, town board is positive about it, and hopefully these uh, amendments and this project can get started in early 2018. Um, now, you all know that Dr. Bradley Peterson from Stony Brook did uh, a study of fish and crabs at the pond this year. He started in March, and then he did some more sampling in July. And because the year he did the sampling was an unusual year for the pond in that there was no spring opening, we'd like to repeat Dr. Peterson's experiment in 2018, or s his sampling, not his experiment, uh, in 2018 to get a year of data when Hopefully there'll be a spring and a fall pond opening. So in his uh, traps, <coughs> pardon me, he caught um, these fish, the striped killifish, the Atlantic silverside, the mummichog, the white perch, and the sheep's head minnow. And he also, so all great bait fish, very important to the ecosystem. And he also uh, did catch crabs and um, in his traps, he only caught male crabs, and he was concerned about not catching female crabs. And we also sampled the water for crab larvae and found no crab larvae. So there is a concern about uh, the crabs, although local fishermen have explained to us you know, that they have caught female crabs, so that's, a, that's very positive. So we'd like to repeat Dr. Peterson's sampling again, which will require you know, your support and also the town board support to allow him. Uh, this is a picture of his graduate student, Chris Heck, in the little boat with the little motor, and we, we would need town. Uh, sorry. Uh, we would need town board support. Uh, whoops. Oh, now I can't go back. Not many slides. We would need town board support, as, as well as your support, to run the uh, motorized boat again in the pond. Can that be done with an electric motor? Um, it, no, in this case, because they are pulling a little dredge to, okay. to sample crabs on the uh, ground, they, on the floor of the pond, they need a certain speed. Other research that we've done have, has used an electric motor. Mm -hmm. What time of year was the this pulling done? March. March. And it was very cold, as you can see. Okay, so pond openings. As I mentioned, and you all are very aware of, we didn't have a spring opening this year, and it resulted in very high water levels, some nearing record levels. And I just wanted to share this photo. This is up at the top of Georgia Cove uh, in mid-July with the pepperidge trees standing in water, already stressed, turning red in July um, because they were their feet were too wet. So, um, you know, we were very concerned, as you know, about uh, inundated septic systems close to the pond and the, high w the, the impact on the pond. Um, but on the other hand, there probably were some positives about the pond levels being so high that the pond was deep and stayed cooler, and that may have also contributed to the lack of blue-green algae blooms. Yeah, we did, can I just step yeah. for a second? We did an inspection of one of the Phragmites removal projects the other day, and one sort of side benefit of this is on the Klein property where they've been cutting Phragmites, it appears that a significant portion of Phragmites have actually died off, mm -hmm. um, maybe whether to an anaerobic condition due to submerged. the high water levels or whatever, but you know, what comes back after the fact, um, that's to be seen, but there's a significant area over there that you can clearly see the Phragmites never produced any growth. So, you know, we learn something every year. It's wonderful. <clears throat> and then I, I threw this in for Jim and Bill Taylor uh, in, on October 19th. We did have, uh, thanks to all of you, a wonderful fall opening of the pond. And the white post, this is a day after the opening, the white post marks the westerly boundary of the trustee land, so you see how neatly the operator 
dug the, the, the gut, just staying right on trusty land. And, and pretty much it's stayed um, on trusty land mm -hmm. since opening. It's, it's early. Uh, you know, it's give, early. Or, <laughs> give or take, but talk about it when it's over. the location, the location uh, as originally dug was excellent and it was an excellent opening. So uh, the last thing I just want to remind the trustees, um, even though it's not under your jurisdiction, Friends of Georgia Capon works watershed wide in the pond. It's a 4,000 acre watershed. It's a very large watershed draining into the pond with airport and two schools and 2,000 homes, and you know right. it's a big long-term project. The restaurant. The restaurant, uh, yeah. several restaurants. And so uh, I just wanted to mention this one project that we were involved with helping the town uh, with the funding to uh, acquire the old Swamp Nightclub. Some of you may remember that. <laughs> or this, then it became the Star Room Nightclub. Anyway, it was uh, uh, being proposed as a high volume car wash, which was of great concern to the community and Friends of Georgia Capon. And uh, that, um, so it's in contract now to be purchased by the town. Um, it is subject to a bankruptcy court, which, so there's a little bit of uncertainty still, but the Friends were able to raise 300,000 towards the purchase price of 2.1 million, and uh, we were very happy to do that and uh, wanna help with other acquisitions mm. in the watershed as we can. That's it for the moment. I'm happy to answer any other questions. Mm. I just wanna clarify that um, in <coughs> reading the minutes of September earlier, um, it did make note that the pond actually did open in March. We did not reopen it because the plovers arrived, but it did open at least once. So there was a little bit of It opened in training. January, not yeah. March. Well, not March, but it did open at least once. Yeah, prior it, wasn't to a, it wasn't a, yeah. a spring opening. Right, yeah. well, it was an opening. Yeah, no, no, I, I know it opened in, in January. It was an opening. Can I ask a question? Yes. Yes. John, do you want John. to come up? By itself. By itself, okay. yeah. But I just gotta put it out there. Absolutely. Jeez. John Aldred, East Hampton. I was just wondering, I'm not sure it's a question for the trustees or the friends and Sarah, but are there any plans uh, or, or discussion about taking a look at what may be coming from this uh, apparent spill that happened near the airport and wells are being tested now, which seems like quite toxic stuff and seems as though it's probably gonna move toward the pond. So I was just wondering if I'm, there's any anticipation of that in any of the uh, you know, well, surveys going you know, on? John, I do know that the Wayne Scott CAC is very concerned about that, and they have held a couple of meetings thus far, and I will be speaking with their environmental liaison, uh, Simon Kinsilla, next week to discuss that further, and hopefully we can provide an update at this December 11th uh, meeting okay. on that yeah. matter. And Sarah, maybe you want to also and comment. I they can model, um, you know, once they get a better um, uh, measurement on actually where the chemical is in the groundwater, they can predict how long it would take before it got to the pond. And once we know that, we could try to do some sampling and see if it's detected. Mm -hmm. That's very unfortunate. We'll look forward to yeah. more information on that. The plume is what they refer to it as. Yeah. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, Amy King, do you, do, you, do you want us to just... You want to do that now? Or sure, or sure we can take care of it. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, this is what the addition of a name on a lease? Yeah, correct. Yeah. yeah. Yep. <coughs> And Adam submitted his affidavit of domicile. Yeah, it's Yes. Yeah. Okay, I had reviewed and I, I responded back. I think it was King. Everything was King. Brother, brother, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I, I Driver's license is a P.O. box, correct? Um, uh, yeah. We typically need a physical address, mm -hmm. not a P.O. box. Does he have a physical? 
you have a voter registration well, card? I don't know if you got a voter registration card. I don't know the last time you voted. Mm -hmm. um, but the, it's the, his physical residence is 176 Shore Road in Lazy Point. You got an affidavit. <clears throat> Excuse me. An okay. affidavit of domicile. I think he put both on there. And it's, it's, yeah. that's seal box on the uh, on the uh, on the uh, driver license. Yeah, DMV often will just put the P.O. box on right. the license. I've long had a both P.O. box. In fact, they probably still do. I'm they cut it off license. on you. In an affidavit, you got a sworn statement that the person resides there. Mm -hmm. um, and if they don't, what's the recourse? Well, you do have a driver's license indicating that they live in Amagansett. You okay. just don't know what their physical address is. So that, to me, is sufficient evidence that they are a resident of the town. Okay. And this will be submitted annually? Yeah. Annual affidavit. Yeah, my, our mom passed away last August, and this is what she had wanted um, in her illness. Things just kind of, sure. and it's been a rough year. Okay. Sorry to hear that. Thank you. Uh, does anybody want to make a motion? I'd like to make a motion. We accept this I'll, and make a change mm -hmm. to the I'll second that. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. I'm going to abstain. Okay. Thank you. Thank and you. so now I, I post in the paper starting this week. Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Good night. Okay. Eric Brown. I'm, I'm here on 199 Willie Pompey. Mm -hmm. You want to do that now? No. You can do it. Whenever. Okay. Um, let's see. This is on Georgica Pond. Eric, would you like to come up, please? I, I don't really have a whole lot to add. Or excuse me, I'm sorry. This is on um, is. over in Georgia. Yeah. It's on it's on the ocean beach. Diane, do you remember this one? Yeah. We visited it. Yeah. Yeah. Did you get a chance to yeah. look at the plans yep. for the uh, yep. proposed walkway? Yep. I did check the uh, original survey. I checked the original plans against the new plan. It appears they're putting the uh, the proposed walkway in exactly the same mm -hmm. spot that it is on the survey now. And they are including the retractable or removable? They're including the section. retractable section. The only question I had, Eric, is on the details, it's showing the same tropical hardwood set of steps. And I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know how the hell you're getting that out of there in the event of a storm, because that thing's probably going to weigh about 4,000 pounds. They may want to reconsider and possibly do something out of aluminum or back there. It's not going to look as good, okay. but it's going to be a hell of a lot easier <laughs> if you want to haul it out of there. I think our, I think our focus, Jim, was only on no, no, the it looks, a lot of which it was made. No, no, so it's, consistent, it's consistent with the rest of the boardwalk, okay. which is lovely. The only thing looking at is if you look at the weight of the materials that you're using there, that's a pretty un, you know, nobody's taking that step out okay. on the approach of a storm. The storm's going to take the steps out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the only other thing I did notice in reviewing this, this plan today is that there is a portion of the revetment that is now uh, seaward of the property line. Mm -hmm. So, you know, existing, <coughs> I'll be it, existing, we're going to fix it, yep. But in the past, we have had some revetments that have been repaired like this, such as um, if you go to Georgica Road and the beach, yeah. you know, the properties east to west. Mm -hmm. over. Anyway, there is a covenant on the deed that requires that these rock revetments be covered. Oh, right. right. We've done, yes. Uh, the ring of property. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. That. Would you be amenable, your client, I, to I getting that in place? Client, but I, I can't imagine why you would want that to. Would be be well, that would be fabulous. That would be fabulous. Actually, yeah. Diane, Scott is not here to, to, right. to do the recollection, but when we visited this property a while ago, that was discussed, and it was, I, I think it was all of our understanding that day that that was going to be, that I, was going to be I, I, part of it. Okay. Right, later the client, but I can't imagine right. why, I can't think of right. the reason why you wouldn't want to keep it covered. Yeah. We cover the Rainier property, I, you know, you right. guys know every, you know, anytime we have bad weather, we've done it two or three mm -hmm. years in a row, and then we're okay for a couple of years, and then we come back, so. Yeah. But it's been my yeah. experience, yeah. Eric, traveling along the beach, that quite a few people do not, uh, fulfill the maintenance right. agreement, so it does happen. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. I mean, I just can't imagine why. Oh, you know, uh, yeah. In my experience, the clients that we've represented have, you know, have wanted, I mean, aesthetically and functionally. Sure. That having the sand there, not having it there doesn't make any sense. I, I, 
Okay. I'm happy to, you know, get that'd be perfect. That that's yep. we'll, we'll yeah, that'd be remain, helpful. Remain consistent with past practices yeah, would be well, fabulous. Right, exactly. Okay. So what do we want to do with this? Um, I'm prepared to vote on it. The only thing I would ask is that we condition that on um, the addition of a, uh, a covenant that they'll keep this thing covered with sand and that they will supply a, uh, a revegetation plan for this, which in this case is really gonna just be beach grass, but we should still have it documented. All right, based on um, what I've been looking at lately with some some of the, you know, following up on permits, you know, we issue the permits and then we're requesting the information be provided to us and then it's not, it slips through the cracks, blah, 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 blah. Why don't we just wait till everything's in place before we make the motion and approve it and issue yeah. the permit? Eric, where are you guys with DEC? And the, yeah, I know, um, do you? They had a couple of technical questions which we responded to before the holiday. Um, they had a couple of technical questions which you don't have, you don't have DC permits on this yet. <coughs> Village? Uh, no, Village is in process. Okay, Two so why don't, we, why don't we just wait on this one then until we get all, until, if you can submit a reveg plan, uh, what I would suggest maybe we include on that, why don't you include the sand fencing right from the get go on this one so that you got a project that's building sand as opposed to waiting for it to erode away and then I think you're good to go. Okay. And consider modifying the materials of your last. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Yeah. I'll make that recommendation. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. It was. Just, yeah. <laughs> these are these okay. are uh, great great agent Thanks, to work with, great attorney to work with. Eric, how long how long do you think it'll take you guys to turn that around? Um, they are estimating. For for our stuff. Um, I mean, I I would imagine we can turn it. What would you request? Two weeks. Um, yeah. Like okay. A couple of weeks. Yeah, you I get mean, it I'll to us. Talk with Rick about that. It's been a while since I've done a, a covenant. But I'm sure you guys you have a. Yeah, there's there's, format. there's I mean, a form in the files. I just fill it in. Yeah. No yeah. contact. Well, give a quote. I have, I have a sample covenant that you can work from as a template. Okay. Or I can use. I mean, like I said, we've done several, including Rainer, that has one on it. I can use that as a starting point. Yeah. And change, you know, yeah. Just you send it for me for review. That's fine. Okay. That's great. And then the other stuff, Jim, we should be able to turn around. Yeah. You know, no, what I was going to say, if you can get it back well, to us by the next honest. meeting. Yeah. In fact, I believe I have a covenant specifically for sand, keeping sand on top of a revetment. Okay. If you have something like that, I, can I? Can you email me and then I'll email to you? Yeah, you email, email you, you email me first and I'll. Uh, yeah, I'll email you first. <laughs> and you'll email me back. Very good. Okay. And the rest of the stuff I'll, I'll get to work on tomorrow. All right. Okay. Hey, thanks. Thanks very much. Okay. Thank you, Eric. Have a good night. <clears throat> Anybody else wish to address the board? No. Okay. Uh, we'll move on to new business. Akabonic Harbor, ZBA application of Dankwitz at 107A, 107B, Isle of Wright Road. Property is 52,574 square feet. Um, and the, the, what they want to do is combine two lots in order to construct approximately 1,600 square foot two story addition with upgraded sanitary system, a 375 square foot swimming pool with 200 square foot pool house, pool equipment, outdoor shower, new sanitary system, a new slate walkway, rollout wooden walkway to the shore within jurisdiction and setbacks of tidal wetlands, bluffs, and side yard line setbacks. Uh, the relief that they're seeking is they're looking for eight variances, um, a variance of 4.4 feet, 6.7 feet, 5 feet, and 5 feet are required from uh, to construct the swimming pool, 95.6 feet foot pool house, 
uh, relief of 93.3 feet for pool equipment, 95 feet, and house addition 95 feet, respectively from tidal wetlands where a 100 foot setback is required. One variance of 50 feet is required from uh, to construct pool house sanitary system 150 feet from tidal wetlands with 200 foot setback is required. A variance of 12.2 feet, 14 feet, 15.5 feet um, to construct a swimming pool 87.6 feet pool equipment. This is getting very confusing. Could you repeat me. that again? No, <laughs> no. Yeah. It so sounds like anyway, some of the variances are up to 90 feet. Yeah, yeah. Th these look no, pretty extreme. It's pretty yeah. aggressive. It's yeah. drastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, don't th I think there's typos there because mm -hmm. I think it may be a variance where it's 100 mm -hmm. feet and they're 95 yeah. feet. This mm -hmm. is a five foot. They're looking for yeah, five foot. Yeah, because the first, 95. if you look at the numbers, the first three variance numbers that were you five had, feet, six feet, four feet. Yeah, and yeah, then you okay. read the following numbers. I okay. think that's the. So they're looking for the five foot. They want nine. Yeah. Well, basically, yeah. understanding that the um, potential impacts this construction could have, either on the waterways or <coughs> for this board going forward with requests for rock revetments, blah blah mm -hmm. blah, to save your house. Um, and your pool, uh, you know, let's let's build something that conforms to code. On the resiliency, the resiliency is an yeah. important theme today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's it's like you oh. know, prove 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 the what is it? Does it it's a, a what's the word I want? Prove prove the, merits? the, uh, the not merits the merits, the but the what is it? Hardship. Mm -hmm. Hardship. Prove that there's a hardship in not having. This cool. pool, this pool house, this decking. How big you know, is the original structure? That's not life or limb necessity. It's a 1,600 square foot addition. Addition, but they're, com they're combining, two, they're combining lots. two lots to do it. Yeah. You know, are they buildable lots unto themselves? Um, I don't know. I'm assuming so. When does this happen? Well, the total would be 52,500 square feet. Of the lots. Of the two lots. Yes. When is this happening? Uh, December 5th. At That's the hearing? At 6.50 p.m. With the ZBA? Mm-hmm. <coughs> now, whose committee is that? This, uh, Dr. Blake, Hog Creek. Akabonic. Akabonic, that's Tyler and I. Tyler and I. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, there's plenty of time to pull a file, make notes, and either write, put a letter in, or appear at the hearing. I would just, based on what I read right there, say I'd say it's not wise to allow this many variances. It's the, the, the future, the mitigation that's going to be required in the future. Bad precedent. Simple, bad precedent. Just, you know, build something that conforms to code. Lane, would you like to craft a letter to be sent I'd to them? Sure. And I'll forward it to Francis? That'd be great. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I'd like to just see the letter before it actually goes mm -hmm. to the ZBA, but... Um, Don't trust my wording. No, 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 no. I actually, I'm <laughs> leaning towards you. Yes, um, yes. Because yes. it's not the first time. I agree. Time. You'd want to see anything before it goes out. Yeah. I agree. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. All right. I could do that. I'll get it to Francis to look at. Okay. Okay. Um, Village ZBA, application of Walter Weil at 92 Georgica Close Road. Um, let's see. They're looking for a fresh water wetlands. Um, yeah. We've already weighed in on this. Oh, we, we have. We approved this project. They're just coming up to the village hearing which is what, December 9th? Uh, I spoke to Drew Bennett today. They do have their DEC permits on this job. Mm -hmm. They have our permit. They're just getting to the uh, CBA, village CBA permit. Jim, in a nutshell, what are they trying to accomplish? This is a Phragmites removal project. It's okay. a different methodology than most of our other applicants. This is an excavation. Um, excavation, removal, and replenishment with clean sand project. Um, they have engaged the same fella that 
Ray. Butch, Ray Roy. Roy Ray. Ray Hinkle. They've engaged Ray Hinkle, and this is a project that basically has been designed around his recommendations. Good. It came before our review several months ago. We approved it. This is just the last and final step at this point. Thank you. Okay, then application of Pond Acquisition Corporation at 291 Montauk Highway. Uh, uh, let's see, application for area variances from chapter 278 zoning, a wetlands permit is required, <coughs> freshwater wetlands and a special permit. Variances are required to legalize the enlargement of an accessory shawl building. Anybody know what a shawl building is? It's a building for the uh, religious education. I think it goes on to tell you. Okay. Yeah. Approximately 757 square feet. <coughs> oh, okay, so they want to enlarge it from 757 square feet to 1,275 square feet um, with a maximum permitted size for an accessory building is 250 square feet. Um, to permit the shell building to contain three rooms with two powder rooms where only one room is permitted and to allow this building to remain 15.1 feet in height with a maximum height for an accessory is 14 feet. Uh, let's see. What property is this? I don't, uh, Perlman. Oh, this is Perlman? I think so. Yeah. There's like two different buildings described in there. They've all been they've all been built already. Now he's trying oh, to get yes. permission to allow them okay. to stay. All right. Mm. Yeah, it's so, coming back to me now, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is one we are gonna need to weigh in on. Mm -hmm. We may have to visit the, pro the property. Yeah, and this Again. one this one could And this is this December 9th as well? This, this one is in uh, the village. This is December 8th at 11 a.m. This is the village? Yes. Okay. This is complicated because, I mean, I don't know if this is the only two issues they're going to need to worry about or if there's going to be even more. Where are we? Where do we stand right now with our Fred Whitey removal project they were going to do? Well, well Jim, so Jim and I have been there. we property anyway. Yeah, mm -hmm. we have a site visit. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, are mm -hmm. these, is this construction mm -hmm. anywhere near where those Frag Mighties are, where the reveg might take place? Mm -hmm. This is definitely hey, worth looking at the map. Now that I'm thinking of it, I think this is no. Okay. No, but yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's a complicated piece of property. <clears throat> you know, on the bright side, I'm sure we've all had the opportunity to watch the Village Zoning Board Planning board and zoning board in particular, they're tough. You know, they really do a good job, and uh, you know, very little gets past them. So, you know, I'm glad that we're able to partner up with them and have some concerns addressed. But um, you know, it's good to know they're on top of their game. And they really are. I wouldn't want to go before them. All right, old business, Georgia Capon Dredging, South Inlet. So, you wanna? Yeah, we're kinda knocking issues off one at a time and moving forward. Uh, uh, have we gotten any response back from DEC? The last, uh, I mean, I talked to George, we, we, we discussed the issue of the 9,000 yard contribution. We've heard some congressional interest again and um, we haven't heard back from George, no. What's congressional interest? Uh, Schumer's <coughs> office is trying to apply pressure to the DEC. To do what? To issue the permit. Oh. Uh, in exchange for the sand? No. No? No, oh, okay. no exchange. Okay. <laughs> no. It just, just sounded like that. I was just, no. you know, clarifying. No, no, it's not no. The, the Okay. sand is, uh, the sand we're discussing is just the sand that naturally goes um, into the littoral drift when we open the pond. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to get credit for that as a contribution to the littoral drift. 
The original, the original. EC do that for anybody else? It was, require that wasn't DC. Else? The Army Corps was trying to require us to put 50% of the sand into the western drift. We oppose that. But with this last opening, we realized that during the process of doing that, that 9,000 yards went back into the drift on its own. So we should get credit for that if they're concerned about it. Nobody was thinking about that at all. So anyhow, we're little <coughs> item by item, inch by inch. Um, I, I, you know, we're still looking forward to trying to do this job. But would be like the February, beginning of March type thing. I'd like to do it sooner. I'd like to, or sooner. Not if the plumbers yeah. arrive. <laughs> well, that's why sooner. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to hear right. about April. And then uh, the excavation of the bottleneck. That, that's, the, they got our, they're reviewing the application. Bruce sent them narrowing the distance from uh, from 40 to 30? From 40 to 30, 30. and um, so we're, they'll be contacting him. It wasn't received well, but passed on to the next level. Okay. Uh, long Wharf maintenance dredging. Looks like they're out of there. Yeah. Yeah. They are out of there. And I was down at Havens Beach, even though that's not our area, and they leveled it as of this weekend that passed. I saw they did that. Even speech could be our area. <laughs> what are they doing? Uh, came back. They, yeah. they, there was a, like about oh, a did. 10 year old dredging. Yeah. Well, it's not a full <laughs> title yeah, search. We, we, we didn't do a full title the search. The okay. Dock. But the the main dock in the village. There was a deed. West of Long Wharf or? West of Long Wharf. West of Long Wharf. Okay. It's a material that they dredged. They put a lot of sand on that beach. Yeah, they built it up. Yeah. And we say on the beach, I mean on the upland property. Yeah. No, on the look that yeah, look that way. On yeah. the beach itself? Pretty much on the water on the beach itself. That's a starting to see the light that yeah, yeah, the Saratoga Fire Department beach is yeah. thing to do. Okay, well that's yeah. all right, because that's always but right on the beach. Yeah. Anybody yeah. wanna discuss So but the material actually came in from west of Long. I don't think so. I don't think it is either. That's that's our not that's not even that's not our jurisdiction because that's yeah, not even like our taken from an area that was not our jurisdiction and placed on the property. Placed on Havens Beach. On Havens Beach. Yeah. I, I, I did get the I deed for that. The deed the business, but I, on Havens Beach. I waited to no, you can, you something can, brief. It was okay. And Go ahead. west of Long Wharf, they didn't dredge in our property either. They're so not even in East Hampton Town. I, I, I just wanted to make a, um, a comment that under new business, <clears throat> somebody had approached me the other day and uh, asked that I bring this up. Um, certain folks that use the uh, Lazy Point uh, to the left, the west of the boat ramp, uh, which is, you know, pretty popular uh, for obvious reasons. But they're blocking their truck and trailer, preventing others from being able to get in and out. So if you're that person, please be considerate and don't block the west side of the ramp. Launch and then park upwind a little yeah. bit more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Launch and leave room for the next guy. Absolutely. And there's been a few times that hasn't happened. I'm sure it's an honest mistake, but, you know, there are a lot of other people that want to get their boats in there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. right. Anyway, with regard to Long Wharf and dredging in Sun mm -hmm. Harbor, I think there's a lot of gray area over there over the years. Yeah. I mean, we used to issue mooring permits in that boat basin over there. Mm -hmm. So just something not mm -hmm. to like totally close the lid on? Well, I don't think there's think a about question it? about the bottom land so much as the actual beach at okay. Haven's the Beach. beach. Okay. Well, no, I, I think the question is the bottom land. Um, not, not in this case. Well, not in this case, because it's west of Long Wharf. It's not even East Hampton Town. <clears throat> but you know, because I have been going through the records lately, and there's a lot of stuff on, and it's the old issue about, you know, Northwest Harbor state waters, right? Is it state waters? Um, the argument that it is is because the dying of patent is bounded on the north side by the bay. Um, the argument that it isn't mean that it's our it's water. Gardner's Bay that, is the boundary. Well, it just says, the dying of patent says the bay, so that's the issue. Um, once you come inside Cedar Point, <clears throat> is that now an enclosed body? 
The trustees throughout the 1800s, even I think even to the early 1900s, they did sell, sell and lease water lots. They sold the land on which Long Wharf is, ba uh, is built. So there is a, you know, there is a question. We, you know, there is a legitimate trustee claim as to ownership of what I'll call Sag Harbor Bay, the bottom land out there. So I, I agree, it's not something you want to foreclose. Mm -mm. Um, that's why we, you know, we, when the Sag Harbor was before us a year or two ago, we were kind of careful in wording that state legislation. I don't know when the issue will be resolved, but I mean, it's, you know, the, the problem of course has been, as is so often the case, that in years gone by, the trustees were not always assertive as to their claims, and so uh, contrary claims and the idea that state land, state bottom land got established. Uh, it's not certainly not clear cut either way, but uh, you know there is a reasonable argument to be made that it's trustee land, trustee bottom land. Hmm. Thank you. Now on the on the beach itself, the issue on the beach is. Um, and this is without the benefit of doing an actual full title report to see what the trustees, see if we can find out how the trustees conveyed land in that area. Remember, they conveyed underwater land. So in those cases, we know the upper land was conveyed out. Uh, all I have on Havens Beach is that the deed to the village of Sag Harbor, which was in 19, I think about 1932 from Lila Havens, uh, did go to the mean high water line. So, you know, their deed claims that they own the Mean High Water at the moment. We don't have any reason to contest that. Uh, we don't have a basis for contesting, not to say that it originally did, but, you know, the deed into the village of Sarah Harbor on its face says that they own the Mean High Water. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's see. Committee reports. So did you want to get that done? Which right? one? Yeah, that's yeah, done. Yeah, 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 yeah. uh, Akabana Cod Creek, dredging of the inlet. It's ongoing. Um, mm -hmm. They've, as of today, <coughs> they've moved about 4,000 yards. Mm -hmm. It's ongoing? Yeah. They, I know they took a couple of days off last week. Monday and Tuesday had a Chesterfield, had an emergency up island. Then you had Thanksgiving. So it's ongoing. So we okayed it. When? I mi the meeting I missed last time? Yeah, I think so. It's the, uh, count, oh, Suffolk it's County. It's the county. County's doing it. It's yeah. the county one, yeah. County's yeah, with their far reach excavator, Chesterfield. On doing. both sides. So county is doing it this by is the one we've been, yeah, This is totally the one we've been new. talking yeah. about for, totally, yeah. for a year and a half, actually. Yeah, but it did come up quick, right? When, when, they, they, when they were ready to go, yeah. they, they came quick. Yeah, and maybe that's what's throwing you off, mm -hmm. like all of a sudden. They're out so there. The county's excavating. Not this is the problem. Right. Right. Yeah, there's no. Yeah. But it is shockingly uh, fast. But they're excavating. Yeah. They're excavating from both sides. From both sides. Well, they started. They started on the last point side. When they're done there, they they said about the middle of next week, I think. They're talking about. Then they're going to go over to the end of Gerard Drive and. Do and what's going to happen, Bill, with that sand? That sand is in a pile. No, 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 no. On Gerard Drive. Drive. They, they, they're going to spread it out on the beach over there. On, on the, the Gerard side? Drive side? Yeah. Gerard Further Drive. north on Gerard Drive? It, it, this, it's it's going to be on the, you know, on the base, on the bay side at the end of Gerard Drive. On it's going to go back into the, the inlet. I mean, the drift, littoral drift is to the south. Yeah. You know, we yeah, can get it to move right it down there. as far as we can. Boy. Well, you Wait, know, what? If, they can the truck it, if they can truck it to the west, there's a whole area along Gerard Drive yeah, that can really use some material. Couldn't we sell it? Will they truck it though? Do we know what their plans are? Oh. Uh, They're just interested in stockpiling yeah. it, I believe. I think it'd be and nice. Then and then as far as transporting it, it has to go out to, to bid, you know, um, or. Or the next the, storm's gonna throw it right back. Oh yeah, I don't want that. Like no, 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 I know. I mean, if you ever wanna rebuild, for example, the beaches yeah. around, you know, Kings Point, Hog Creek Point, all that area, which where there's a lot of revetments, your, your sources of supply are going to be dredging from Hog Creek and dredging from Akavonic. I think we need to take a, a quick look at maybe a yeah, better what place they can for do the sand. The thing. Yeah. And the stuff coming out of the, all, from the Laos Point side is just going on the beach right there as well? No. No, no that's no. been sold. We're going to do that now. Oh, okay. We're going to do okay, that well, now. Okay. Okay. Um, 
think Clint. We got a price from Bistrian yeah. Materials to move that sand as far south as we did last time. Mm -hmm. um, there was one property that was excluded from that one the last time, which is now being included. They will, they're all willing to pick up the cost, uh, which is going to run between forty-seven thousand and sixty-three thousand four hundred fifty dollars. And Pat Bistrian would be Pat doing Bistrian what? would do it. We would front the money and be reimbursed by the property. They're owners. buying the sand from us. They're paying for the just for the move for the yeah. moving of it. It's basically, the same thing we did last time. Okay. It's going on our beach. Okay. And it's a, pretty much the same thing we did last time. So we're not out of pocket on any of that? No, no it's not going to cost. It's anything. actually, a, it's kind of a win-win because, yes, it's going on the beach, but a portion of it will go on their bluff oh, okay. to stabilize. Well, the toe. Well, it's the, the toe, toe the excuse me, the toe. Yeah. The toe out. Yeah. So, so which of the four didn't participate last time? Clemente. This Clemente that was the last one, the, last the one? only one who wouldn't, but he has now agreed, and he will also drop his um, lawsuit. And I'm expected to be contacted on that? Yeah. I haven't received yes. anything on that, as far as I know. Okay. And uh, the, so he's the only holdout for a lawsuit? He's not a holdout. Mm -hmm. he, I mean, he's the only one still with an active lawsuit that he is. But he's a, he is, I'm understanding, he is willing to drop that. Yeah, he, he's withdrawn. He's, so he's if we start moving that sand and we start at the end by the access point, mm -hmm. suit's going to be dropped before the truck oh, yeah. makes it down to yeah. his yeah. end. Oh, right. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's right. yeah. well it's aware of that. I need to see that. That's yeah, I want to see that. I need to see that. And, and what's the time frame but for this the reimbursement this of the money? But this just all occurred last okay. week, right yeah. before. Yeah. But let them, yeah. have them, you know, contact what's, me. To, yeah. yeah, what's the time frame for reimbursement well, whoever of the money? Well, whoever's our attorney, actually, whoever Sam. Last time we were reimbursed within a week. week. Yeah. yeah. Let's make that clear, because, yeah. you know, yeah. good winter storm and it's gone again, then they'll say they're not going to pay it. Yeah. Well, the last time we did, we did yeah. just did this a year ago. I know. And Clemente I know. opted out of it. Well, he mm -hmm. wasn't uh, part of the, yeah. And uh, <coughs> it worked out well. There's yeah. one, that's one central mm -hmm. homeowner who's organizing the neighbors. Very nice gentleman. Yes. yes. And, and they, they've worked out their numbers, their percentages, mm -hmm. and it's all been agreed. I have to agree with Diane, though. I think we have to make it clear, you know, that uh, we would like to be paid, you know, within hmm. 14 days, 30 days. Yeah, but Brian, the last time they paid us right away. But that wasn't the same gentleman. It is. No, it is the same. No, it's, it's a group of property owners. Okay. Mullen, Mullen is sort of acting as their arbitrator agent, Spokesperson. and they were very very, they very were good very, they very they good. Want, but when Last something goes time. wrong, they're the first ones to hit you with a lawsuit. They're mm -hmm. the first one to ask you for a rock amendment. Okay. So let's make sure we're going to play nice, but you know, tit for tat. You want this? We want this. Let's In light of what you front. said, uh, let's let's wait. Give them the week or so. I don't want to. You know. We don't have to be pushy then. I, I am just thinking our, our attorney on that suit is Brian Matthews. Yeah. So yeah, he'll does be, he know about this? He know should, yeah, they they just supposedly be contacting. He's a nice guy. He's yeah. a nice guy. I don't know, I don't know what to yeah. say. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm going to need an approval to sign this agreement with Bistrian. Mm -hmm. Put a motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. But all them other things are going to be in place before oh, yeah. it starts. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's all right. Uh, yes. All right. Yes. The, the, the county has actually asked. Originally, the county didn't want another contractor on the site while they were working. Now they're finding that the sand is getting in their way. <laughs> so they pay the other Now they it's want it. It's a big pile. It's amazing. It's a very yeah. big pile. Mm -hmm. yep. All right. Did you um, see the pile there? Georgia Capond Association Road for Frag Mighty. That, th Lori, there's been no activity. Okay, I think we can take it off the agenda. I mean, we, the way that's been left is they changed their methodology. They put in an application in for cutting rather than excavation. Um, and we got back to them and said that no, we still <coughs> wanted a vegetated buffer. And that's where it's. That's where it's sitting right now, and they have not accepted that as a condition. Has their application run out, or? 
Mm. How, how old is it? It's a year plus. Maybe they should just make know. a new application up there to get around to on well, I think do they it. did make a new application. Yeah. Oh, well. I just make a motion to deny the old application as submitted, yeah. so yeah. then they got to come in with a new one. Yeah. It's been sitting around mm -hmm. too long. All right. Yeah. Is that how you handle that? Mm -hmm. Then I'd like to make yeah. a motion to deny it. Wait, did Diane make the motion? Mm -hmm. did you you seconded the motion. Diane you made it and Jim it. seconded it. Okay. All right. Did Denied? you make it as a motion? Yeah. You, I thought that was more I of was, a suggestion. It was, but... <laughs> It okay. doesn't matter. Deny as submitted. What are we, what, what are we proposing just to deny? What is this for? Deny, deny as submitted because it's been hanging around for a moment. No, no, what, what is it? What is it? Oh, it's pragmatic removal? removal. Vaughan Association yeah. Road. That's okay. Okay. Oh. the George Fifth Association. Yeah. So denial without prejudice because they haven't yes. pursued Sure. So right, okay. good. Yes. Yeah, do it as denial without prejudice. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yes. Okay, um, you second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Harbor Management? Yes, um, as everyone knows, the Harbor Management Committee has been holding a series of meetings on the Deepwater Wind Farm South Fork, and the long-awaited environmental presentation from Deepwater Wind will be taking place at the next public trustee meeting on December 11th here at Town Hall, so I encourage everyone to attend. It should be Regular lots of meeting at 6 a.m.? And we're gonna start a little early at 6 p.m. And uh, looking forward for some information on the turbine base sidings, the jet plowing methodologies and impacts, some of the results from Block Island and from the summer surveys that weren't available during our first environmental meeting on the Deepwater Wind South Fork project. So we've been waiting quite a while for this, and I'm very interested in hearing what they have to report to us. So it should be a, a really good meeting. Uh, in addition to that, on 12-14, the Harbor Management Committee will have their regular December meeting at the trustee office. We'll be looking at our new uh, duck blind maps and probably doing a little bit of a debriefing on the Deepwater Wind meeting. So again, that is open to members of the Harbor Management Committee, and if any members of the public would like to attend, please contact the trustee office. All right, I just want to see, Rick, if you have any sense, you know, listening to these guys talk to us over the last several months, and you know they do talk a lot. They do provide a lot of information, and it does raise more questions. You know, it's been a nice dialogue. It's been a long dialogue. Long sure. dialogue. But basically, at every meeting, I keep hearing we are submitting an application at the start of the year. Correct. They are submitting. Their goal so is to submit an application right. in the first quarter of 2018, and they will need to have the support of the town board and the trustee board to do that. So after 12-11, and probably part of the discussions at the 12-14 Harbor Management Committee will be to start to prepare recommendations to the board. Okay, because this is like, I was hoping that when they came to us way last spring, we'd be at that point now. So was I. Going into the, yeah. So I'm just wondering, I mean, are you still they, confident that they're working with us to get to that point in the first quarter of 2018? The, the, the meeting on the 11th, I think, is really going to lift the veil on the project. Okay. And all of this work that's been taking place with trawl surveys, underwater photography, research on the Block Island project, which is a in-place prototype for what they plan to do off north of Cox's Ledge, needs to be brought to the table. So there's a lot of anticipation about okay. this because it really does <coughs> impact the environment and our fisheries. Yeah. So it's a very important presentation, and I, I didn't feel we were really in a position to weigh in until we saw this information. Okay. Because there's been a lot of very good uh, persuasive mm -hmm. speaking and general information about the project, but in this area, in On fairness sides, to them, yeah. they, yeah, they, they yeah. You know, haven't been able to present the information because they didn't put together the report. Because yeah. during the summers when the water's calm, you can send divers down, you can do the trawl yeah. surveys. Yeah. And that's what was asked of us was to wait until they prepared and compiled All right. their report. Yeah. So I'm just hoping we're not being played, if I could be blunt, you know? Yep. Is there any talk well, about... The, yeah. As to address yeah. Diane's point, Brian, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, you know, I think it's going to be very clear okay. on the 11th, uh, how uh, genuine and how detailed and how professional 
the environmental findings are. Okay. So I think the proof's gonna be yeah. in the pudding. I think we all need to bring our A game and our questions to that, to that yeah. meeting okay. and at that time be prepared for us all to come together and, and share our thoughts on it as a board. Okay. And if we need to have a special meeting before the end of the year, that may yeah. be appropriate. Right, definitely. Um, and 12 14 is certainly a date to you know, start that process right. of disseminating but if we also the information. Have, like you said, if we have the first quarter of 2018, there's more opportunities for the board to continue dialogue with them, with the public, if we need amongst to. ourselves, right? That, and that yeah. may be a recommendation. Yeah, because I you can't know, see be one more meeting, one meeting on the 11th and another one on the 14th that all the questions are going to be answered to be on board 100% with what they're doing. So I would probably concur knowing, with you. Yeah, knowing that there's that little, couple extra, little extra time at the start of the year yeah. that they'll continue to talk with us makes me feel better. Yeah, so yeah. let's continue yeah. that discussion. Do we have any sense of where that transmission line would be coming on? Uh, you know, logistically, uh, I think Beach Lane is a preferred location. Mm -hmm. And there has been discussions at our town uh, energy sustainability committee's meetings uh, about that location and discussions with the Wayne Scott CAC. And I know that their uh, environmental subcommittee has been very uh, on top of this request and project and doing a lot of research. And I think we will hear from them on the 11th as well. So uh, their community you know, ha has a big stake in this if that becomes the landing site. Yeah, I would, you know, without getting too deep into this, I, you know, I would be a little concerned uh, because that's a pretty populated area in the summertime. Mm -hmm. I would like them to perhaps go a little further, either east or west, and find an area that's a little, you know, quieter. And um, to what purpose? Well, <clears throat> not not that I have a prof professional opinion. I'm only echoing what I've heard. Uh, through the studies that uh, this uh, cable uh, in time uh, could expose itself through erosion uh, or scouring, if you will, of the tide going in and out. Um, I don't know, Jim, you know, they it's have, the unknown. They have uh, spoken to that in terms of how deep the cable would have to be run. They have uh, coastal geologists studying the shoreline topography mm -hmm. at a series of different sites. So that information will be brought forth on the 11th, Brian, and that's you know, a really important question, and that's one of the uh, main concerns of the Wayne Scott community, is how to uh, properly uh, bury the cable, trench the cable, so that it, it cannot be exposed during a superstorm sandy type event. And then, of course, what are the dangers of it being exposed? Mm -hmm. Well, it's actually going to go through a conduit. Right. Yeah. So the condo would be exposed. But I think, I think these are questions that should be brought to the meeting of the 11th and, you know, uh, brought to the attention okay. of the experts that are going to be here to uh, make the case for how safe it is, how deep it is, uh, <coughs> are the EMFs disruptive to fish species. Right. You know, these are all the things we've been waiting for. And to Diane's point earlier, we've had a lot of general discussion. But a lot of these details haven't been brought forth yet. And I heard a lot well, of we, different we late possibilities, <laughs> options. <laughs> possible locations, and that's one of the reasons I brought it up, you know, in hopes that maybe, you, you know, you knew, well, they're right. kind of leaning towards this well, area. When you, when you look at where the substation is, okay. and how, you know, to run a cable there without disrupting Montauk Highway right. and all kinds of things, it, it seems to make s some sense from that perspective. Okay. But Let's is it... go through the pond and through the pipe over to 114. You're not the <laughs> first one to say that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, well, you know, right. I'm looking forward to I, I have a lot of the same questions. Sure. And I think on the 11th, we're going to have a, a really spirited uh, meeting. So I'm really looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. and, and then we have a lot of work to do right, right after that. So you know, we may have to spend some time you know, debriefing this information after the 11th to, uh, to make sure we really understand everything. And um, you know, on the 14th, we will also take a look at you know some of our new duck blind maps and make sure that we've been <coughs> keeping up on maintaining those locations. And we do have a few derelicts still out there, Jim, that I'd like to get with you on and get right. those cleaned up. Uh, and that's about it. Do we issue <coughs> permits for blinds in um, Hog Creek? I don't believe we have one there at this time. No, we don't. The, no the, the distance across might be a little tight. No access. <coughs> no, but there is now. 
there is now. Yeah, there is. Yeah, we just have to check out the, uh, the setbacks. So it's mm -hmm. possible. Hmm. Okay. Uh, um, Nappy Glazy Point, Curtis Geocubes, and sand placement. Before we go anywhere with this, do we own the beach? This is, these, you know where Curtis is, Diane? The, yes, Fairbury Hall Road. Yeah, it's one, it's one of Norman Edwards' is all properties. I don't think we do. This is the one where first we said um, that we didn't have jurisdiction and then we said we do. Well, because no, they've got a letter. They've got, did you get the, the did, other one. did you get the, uh, did you get that package on this? They've got a letter from a few years ago. Mm -hmm. That yeah. um, when you were clerk, line here. I'm gonna I let me just give it to you. It. May refresh your memory. Hmm. Yep. This was not Curtis. That was Sirota, the next door neighbor. Next door neighbor. Oh, okay. Right. No portion of the project appears to encroach into that under the jurisdiction of this board. Mm -hmm. Right. So this is what were they proposing? Well, they were proposing. Golden. Billy, did you do the geo cube Golden. at Sorota? Uh, did he do it? Then it was our backs. So, so they, they didn't provide us with the, the application for Golden then. For who? Here. The letter was in reference to a property for Golden. Is that the same property? Well, Cur Curtis, is Curtis? A new, Curtis is a new owner here. I don't know who the previous owner was. Okay. Golden was a different project. That's a couple years now. Is it? Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. But so those are the bags you guys manufactured, but you didn't install them. We didn't install them. Yeah. Yeah. So road is to the, now you're, are you the applicant on Curtis? Co with, uh, Co with Hammer? Yeah. Okay. So we have the application and your drawings for Curtis. And this is Curtis, survey? Yes. Yes, okay. Geocubes in high water, proposed stairs, coastal roads and hazard line. Um, do we see a deed line along the shore? Well, there's not one shown on that survey. No. So before we enter the question of whether we have jurisdiction or not, perhaps a copy of the deed would help clarify the situation. Um, but there was one property where I was looking in the office the other day, might have been this one too, where they were proposing, the Upland homeowner was proposing a berm on their Upland property, which obviously is outside the jurisdiction of the trustees. Several years later, following this erosion, now they want to put in more like a revetment, a small knee wall, whatever. Um, actually, maybe young Lemieux wound up in court because now they are putting rocks and et cetera below the mean high water mark onto the bottom land within trustees jurisdiction. So that's wherein, you know, you never 100% close the door on your trustee's jurisdiction along the waterway because you never know what Mother Nature is going to do. So in this particular case, so before we do decide whether these, these, these bags are on our property or not, um, we'd probably want to get a copy of the deed so you have a clearer indication of the property line. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, based on that, make a determination of whether you think in our... In our esteemed opinion, would we find geo cubes along that shoreline to be more like a soft approach or more like a hard approach? Or well, like with Miss Noble, you know, you put in sandbags, they break, they fall apart, get them out of the way, you know, take them off the beach. I, I think in our, this was discussed at our last meeting, I believe, and I think we said at that time we wanted um, someone to come on behalf of the applicant. You're, 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 you're representing. Uh, I am, yeah, but Andy. Was yeah, I was really <coughs> thinking that because Andy Hammer's involved, I think, right? Yeah. Um, you know, I was really thinking that, you know, their attorney would explain why uh, we don't have jurisdiction. Now, I have seen the Sirota correspondence, in which we do appear to say that we don't have jurisdiction over their project. Um, I'd like to at least probably hear from this applicant as to the same argument. 
Uh, we're probably not going to get a real firm, if we want a firm answer, we're probably not going to get a firm answer to it unless we uh, were to try to go back and um, do a chain of title. But, or if you just, if you look at the, I didn't look closely at the survey enough, but are these geo cubes being placed where they are going to be impacted at any 24 hour period by the high tide? I mean, they're going to well, be wet. So let's they're be clear about that. Our, our, own, well, our claim of ownership here would be the beach. Okay, we know we don't own Gardner's Bay and we don't own the upland. So if it's on the beach, the question is, do we own the beach? <laughs> um, or that actually title. probably is, that probably know. is a question that I suspect could be answered because this area, this was the area known as Cedar Bush, Cedar Bush and on into Promised Land. This is an area that was still in trustee ownership in the mid 1800s. And uh, they, because the first fish factories down there were leases from the trustees. So the trustees apparently still own the land. They then began conveying out property down there. The Edwards family got a lot of the land. Well, this was down Edwards. Here. This, was this was Edwards. Property. Edwards is owned. They got all this, all this land down here. So there might be deeds out there from the 1860s, 1870s, 1880s. You know, that's not that far back in time. You'd go to that deed and say, where did the deed go to? Did it go to the bay or did it go to the beach? If it went to the bay, that means it went to the high water mark and we gave it the beach. If it doesn't go to the bay, that means we retain the beach. But Rick, we also have the intertidal to consider. The intertidal area, well, we don't own below, un, under New York State law, below mean high water, below mean high water belongs to the underland, underland, underwater landowner, which in this case is New York State. Out in Gordon, sometimes Suffolk County seems to own some of that bottom land, but uh, our claim would be above mean high water. Oh, it's always where we claim to own is above being our water mark. Thank you, John. You said you like that left way, right? This structure is proposed landward of the high water mark and off the beach. Okay. So landward of the beach. Yeah. Okay. So you're you're building it into where the bluff is right now? Yeah. Well, so that's the basis for us not having jurisdiction. Yeah. We're replacing. Okay. You accessing it over the uh, via the homeowner's property? Correct. We have chose the access path on the site plan. If they're landward of the beach, then you know I'm sure that their ownership goes at least down to the beach. So they, if they're landward of the beach, it's their own land. So then it goes back to where we had the person proposing the berm up on their own property. Right. You know, and right. that's really unfortunate for our purposes, um, but really important to where natural resources are. Yeah, that's it, not unregulated. They still need right. DC permits. They still right. need town permits. Maybe mm -hmm. the time has come <coughs> for future questions concerning ownership of that Cranberry Hole uh, strip there, that beach, uh, that uh, a trip be taken to the county up in Riverhead to find the deed or a title search to find to establish title, ownership. Chain of title search, you know, in that area. Maybe a handful of those, yeah. if that makes sense. Um, because if it I isn't. Mean, I can investigate, see how much it would cost to do that. Oh, th yeah, it you sounds know, like money well You're not going back in the ancient, ancient history. No, you're not homes. going back to the original land grants. You're going, we know we're going back within, you know, recorded time. Um, there actually are maps from early 1900s showing land ownership in that area. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have some idea who you're dealing with, who the uh, you know, owners were by the very late 19th century. So you might be searching 20 to 30 years before that. I, I think it's important. Let me find forward. out what the cost yeah. would be yeah. and I'll get back to you. Yeah. Okay. And knowing like, you know, this is similar to putting up one bulkhead or one rock revetment. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to have scouring on either side. So we're going to have to know what's going on with the other properties and see its impact. Well, we already know what's mm -hmm. going on in Sirota. <laughs> yeah, you could tell. It. Yeah. It looks like a textbook yeah. case. You know what's so interesting, though? So they put it though, up without a permit, Sirota. Yeah, well, permit one, or no permit. One could argue yeah, that they result. say it's okay, and then scouring takes place. Then they can come so back to Sirota us and say, what are you doing to yes. us? Yeah. You pay yeah. for it and fix it. Could. It could. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not. It's it's not even on the beach at this point because there's no beach. Yeah. But this application, I don't know if you guys had a chance to look at the site plan. 
but it is um, proposed, actually our fill that we're placing over this is, is 12 feet above the high water mark. And then that, the structure itself is another uh, eight feet landward of that. So it's almost 20 feet above the high water mark. So why is there an application here? We, Andy put it together so you guys can confirm you don't have jurisdiction. Are you talking about some mm -hmm. No, no, no. 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 Yeah. The application. For Curtis. And, and this application, mm -hmm. Curtis. but it's not the beach. It's pending before uh, the, the town, the zoning board of appeals. Rick Water. is saying no. Uh, it's got yeah. Yeah. Curtis has a permit right. for the. Well, he's saying we need to search it. And the okay. Andy, oh, permits from both agencies. first so one of your right. Right. requests. All right. I think it's important. Yeah, yeah. yeah but the, the, the project itself is above the high water. Oh, no, I get that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No. But he said that they put the package together so we can confirm we don't have jurisdiction. Um, is that right. based on ownership or location of the project? Location of the project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the survey uh, showing that? Yeah, I'd like to know anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have a survey showing that? Yeah. Do you have a copy of the survey? Yeah, there's a survey. I've got a copy here. It's a small version. So you have DC and, and zoning board. Hey, Bill, do you want to just step up? Yeah, sure. So uh, Here's the site plan to show you this. Beach That one's that one's golden. That's that's Oh that's a different this is one. The other one. Well, I mean they're all similar. Um, do you have we copies of the DEC and ZBA permits? Um, I can provide them to you. Yes, sure. I'd like to like to just ensure that the um, project descriptions all match. Sure. And conditions don't conflict. Okay. Yeah. Well, is this, this isn't a survey. Is it a site plan? Are these meant to be temporary? Yeah. Like Sorotis? <laughs> I mean, this is They're not designed literally to literally this is gonna be <laughs> In time they break down. Uh, yes. Yeah. Like what? Fifty years? I think twenty it's, years. I think it's like twenty years. Twenty years. Yeah. And they're designed to be cleaned relatively easily. But yet I recall in Montauk they were finding like the casing of the geo tubes on the beach. I could be mistaken. Yeah, I don't know In what that years was. years past, yeah. Yeah. Mm. So do you have any idea like how recent this particular erosion is? Um, yeah. Has he tried, I mean, attempted any other, through the middle any of the other park. attempt at shoreline stabilization before we jump to the geo cubes? I think well, that house yeah. did a bluff restoration about five years ago. So that would be something to review as well, whether the permit was from the trustees or another entity. I don't know. Nice I to see to see what they did. Yeah, we weren't involved in that. Would this be considered, Bill, a hard structure? And if so, would you be concerned about scouring to the east and west of uh, this gentleman's or th these folks' home? Um, d typically, these geostructures are not considered hard structures. Mm -hmm. um, and what we do is end the structure before the property lines a good you know, 10 feet or, or so to, to mitigate any issue with the adjacent property. And this is the property, this is the, this is the photographs from January, huh? Yeah. I don't know if that's enough, yeah. but you know. Yeah, I don't know, so but you know, again, so we're- It might be for naught. Sure. Yeah. So we would- Sirota, right is it, does that documentation yeah, there better. tell us yeah, when Sirota put off. theirs in? Without the permits, be cutting into like how long ago was that? They're basically replacing. Now what are they? They're breaking, or they, they're just no, catching they, up. He's looking to legalize them. Oh, now he wants but, to legalize them. They're still yeah. in place. They're still functioning. No, no, no that's created, a created a no. peninsula around the house. But that's that's a problem. Sirota's the, the bag the bag system has completely failed at this point. So well, that's a complete. good reason to do another one, huh? Right. Well, I think part of the issue is the installation on Sirotis 
What about the core logs? What about terracing? They're not, they're, they're, what about com they're complete, you know something. what, Diane, from, a, from an engineering standpoint, they're completely not, they're not designed for that purpose. You know, the core logs, they work if you've got sort of on a freshwater pond or something like Georgia, some very minor like wave action, nothing over let's say six inches or so in wave action. They're not, they're not recommended, they're not designed for this application. I mean, we use them sometimes upland from the toe to where they're not exposed to the wave action but they're not designed to, to, to sustain, you know, any kind of wave action at all. Jim, is there any opportunity for retreat here to maybe make a little work? Minimally, here? minimally. I don't think that this Curtis property has much opportunity to retreat at all. The Sirota property, there is. He can, Sirota can go, can go south and west and probably even retain his septic system and move. But you know what, even if he does that, you still have a shoreline that's retreating at an at a incredibly it's rapid it's rate. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, there's no groins along there that are mm -hmm. tolerating this. No. It's just natural process? Yeah. Is this just a mm -hmm. weak spot in the system? Yeah, I don't know. Well, when these people build these houses, yeah. they had 100 plus like feet yeah. in front of them. Yeah. Weird area. Yeah. And I, it, it, sometimes it can be tied back to the, the dredging of um, you know, west of there from, uh, uh, east of there from the inlets when they started Everybody changing that energy. Seems to think that, uh, that peak. That peak, yeah. yeah. But it's a long way from that It is a long way. Hmm. So that's, that's yeah, a tough okay. call. But I, the big concern is yeah. that this house is very yeah. close oh, to the edge mm -hmm. and it is a block foundation house. And mm -hmm. um, the owner obviously is very concerned about that's undermining good. the foundation yes. and damaging the house. What about raising it up? Wow. Raising the house up. You know, the thing is, if you're raising a house, if you're just raising a house and putting it on pilings, um, there's really no logic at that point if you if you got something sitting in harm's way. You know, typically what you'd be doing then is you'd be moving it back, you'd be raising it up, you'd be putting it on pilings. Mm -hmm. You just, yeah. Shouldn't we just be concentrating on whether we own the property or not? Really, I think probably. I think yeah, that's the question. That's, I mean, yeah, yeah. That's no, where the, the discussion's pretty intriguing. <laughs> you know, definitely want to know if we own the property. Well, their bottom line is at this point it doesn't really. The issue of whether we own the beach is irrelevant because right. they're not putting it in the beach. They're basically replacing their bluff with the structure. Yeah. So, uh, so on the face of it, they're on their own land. Yeah. But with the beach retreating. I mean, does that change? That can change. I mean, if we look at examples we've seen on the south-facing beaches. You look to the east, the next-door neighbor. When they did that project, I'm sure when that was done, that was not done on the beach. That was done replacing their bluff. Mm -hmm. But right now, you've, you've got, you know, literally have a few feet between these, these bags and he's got a block foundation too, I think. Yeah, he does. Yeah. And then you notice that that neighbor and this neighbor, they're both still though proposing nice walkways. You know, let's build a structure that protects our shoreline and then drive stakes into it to get down to the beach. It's like, do you want access to the beach or do you want to protect your property? You know, so. And in some cases you have walkways going 25, 30 feet onto the beach. And that's being done, I imagine, because we're saying that we don't own the beach or going on that premise. And people have pretty much. Well, there's very little beach here. Well, in some cases, I just looked at a picture that uh, Francis showed us, and uh, there are some pretty big areas. And granted, there are areas that have little beach, but there were some pretty big areas there with walkways extending uh, about <coughs> halfway. Uh, of the uh, well, this walkway is going into the bay yeah. now. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tough. Tough situation. Oh, yeah. Again, I say uh, re I research one or two of them. Deed just to be absolutely sure. Mm -hmm. Just to know that property line. <laughs> Can't hurt. East Channel. East Channel. Well, that's something we're going to have to read. There was. Huh? It could be a requirement. I know when you go on GIS. Right? 
Huh. Those property lines well, are we 100 feet to the back. Yeah, but yeah, you don't. Suffolk County tax well, maps don't rely on those. We went out, we went They're not that far off. They are. But the, the erosion that's Have going we, on I there. Know, whatever, I've talked to half a dozen people on that. They keep tying it back to that. So, yeah. I yeah. Sort of yeah. so and that's the yeah. thing, though. If the, prop, the deed, you know, if, it's, if, <coughs> if they lose and their property because it's underwater well, now, you lost your property. It's a, it's a shame, but it's what's happening. Mm -hmm. Just that little drift in there. And then, uh, and then make a commitment to an in lot where it makes yeah. where it makes sense based on that. I can share with you guys that these the property owners on um, on uh, Cranberry Hill are um, discussing doing a beach replenishment project at their own cost which would be the long-term solution. Obviously, that makes a lot more sense. We're encouraging that, and we're trying to help them with that. Um, or if they go forward with geo cubes and beach nourishment, a covenant that would say, we're gonna keep these things closed, might help soften that blow for trustees, natural resources, whomever is issuing that permit. Yeah. yeah. But I think, you know, the, the big question is, yeah, we're looking for jurisdictional determination. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's going to require Rick doing some homework. Yes. Well, uh, I, the idea of the answer is the no, survey shows no homework. that it's inland of their property. Now, that may change in the future. But, but as, of, as of right now. It's as of right property. now, it appears that they're on their own land. Because they're not on our beach. They're not on the beach, and therefore, it said we don't it's know whether it's our it's beach. It's of the mean high water mark right now. What's that? Landward of the mean high water mark. Right now. Well, landward of the Mean Watermark is the beach. They're landward of they're they're showing that they are landward of the bluff toe. Mm -hmm. Where where is the bluff toe right now? Given all the they have, they have it shown on the survey. But if you look it's at the beach right now, I don't think the survey represents what's the, what it looks like. The beach. Who was the survey the, dated? I mean, the, the photographs the are dated January 2017. But if you look yeah. at the scouring, the, the the bluffs clearly have been cut right. Well, it's, I know it's almost. It's almost a vertical sculpting. It's a vertical sculpting right now, so it's got to be a change in the change, in change in the shoreline um, out there. Absolutely. Well, it's pretty recent. It's a 2017. Yeah. yeah. November okay. 6. November 6, 2017. Yeah. Brand new. Most hmm. of a month old. Oh, that that one's old. Couldn't hurt you to look at it anyway. Yeah, I mean, I think it warrants a site visit. Certainly. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, happy to meet you guys there if you want to. But, uh, no, again, yeah, I just think everyone's just concerned, though, really, about yeah, what, what may happen, you know, from more structure there. So I think some of the concern is what may happen after the, the project is put in place and how do we, you know, approach that discussion. So, you know, maybe the site visit can start that and maybe we can finish it when you guys come back. But, you know, again, if it's not all, if it's not our, you know, domain, if you would, you know, we have other agencies within the town that do just that. Mm -hmm. So I think it would be redundant. Right. Could be educational, but mm -hmm. redundant. Right. No, I think it couldn't hurt, though, even though it, proportions might be redundant, but other, we look at an application from a different perspective as a ZBA or natural resources. We might be able to offer something for them to consider for public access in the future, mm -hmm. or you know, to take a broader picture of the shoreline versus just the one property, we might be able to okay. if if we if we put our thinking caps out, have a little time to digest it and think about it, be able to offer something as adjacent property owners even that might be beneficial for the future. I'm not so sure yeah. the applicant would be interested in our input. <laughs> um, but as adjacent property owners, but we're not. For argument's sake. If, if Rick is yeah. correct in that we don't even have the title area. Right. True. Okay. But I'm, I'm still going to I'm still gonna look at it. I see that. it right yeah. <laughs> All right. It's a title it's question, too. Edward, uh, property, for sure. Okay. Um, but, um, again, I'm happy to meet uh, with you guys anytime. Well, uh, Billy, what's your timeline for this? Is this something that's on the front burner, back ready burner? Ready to go right away. This uh, property owner so you, is very, We want to do the site visit very quickly. Yeah. The, the, literally, the house is, you know, 12, 18 feet away from uh, from the block foundation. Mm -hmm. That's a point well taken. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, it's very concerning. Copies of those other permits would be beneficial. I'll get them. I'll get yeah. them right to you. Thank, Thank you. you, guys. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Paul. Thanks. All right, Sirota. Sirota. I thought we decided last time that we don't, we can't legalize sandbags. 
Well, at this point, we can't legalize what's going on. I gave him what I thought was good advice, was to engage a coastal engineer to design a project for the replacement of his, of his bluff and or hire a, a structural engineer to come up forward with a proposal to move the house. But he's got to actually make an application for something um, to just throw some sand over those bags that he's got there. It's not going to make any sense to him, to us, or anybody else. And that clearly is sort of, they're in the water at this point. Whether we own the beach or not, I think it's a D, it, it, it's probably more likely a town thing. I talked to that too, uh, Mr. Schroeder's thing as the- Come on up. Please. So, yeah, uh, again, these sandbags were installed. We didn't install them. Um, you, when were they installed? Uh, I think they've been there for about seven years, six years. I think it was 2011 or something. Yeah. And uh, they were, as Jim noted, basically improperly installed. So the thought would be to go and just repair them and cover them sim with sand and get them on some type of a maintenance to keep them covered. Are they the burlap type material or the, or the plastic? No, it's plastic, mm -hmm. polypropylene. Yeah, because I've seen those shred and look like coconut all over the beach. Yeah, those are the regular ones. These are, ve these are hard, heavy duty. Okay. So they'll, they, but they do need um, repair. You know, that would be the thought. But again, we haven't submitted an application to you guys yet, but that's, that would be the thought. Right, so the, the application that he submitted was to legalize the sandbags mm -hmm. and moving the house. So yeah. we have to do something with this. Is, is, is you're going to be submitting an application? If you, if that's what you guys want, yeah. So we deny this. Okay. But first off, do we have any jurisdiction on this? I think we do now. They're pretty much in the water, close, to, pretty much. But do, do we own the beach there? Same place. Are we talking about, same, we talking we're talking about right next door. Right next door. Right next door. Yeah, we're going yeah. towards the same we're church. Different piece of property. There, there are three properties. Sorota property. Sorota. Yeah. yeah. There are three. The, that's my. And I think, we've, honestly, <coughs> guys, before we go too right. far down the road of approving, denying, approving. or anything, I'd like to know confidently whether we even have jurisdiction here. Amen. Yeah, that's that's the homework I think we've been talking about. Yep. Yeah. What can we do to establish that? So let's just table it till we get. All right. So let me let, let, let me look into uh, the, you know the cost of doing that. That that address in particular. Those three well, it's probably going to be what I'll call the Cedarbush coastline. It's going to be that okay. shoreline. It's going to be the area just north of Cranberry Hole Road and you know west of uh, the Napa State Park, west of the fish the old fish factory. Mm -hmm. It's not a particularly long. Are we going to do a full time search? What's that? A full title search? I'm gonna find out what a full title search is. I mean, okay. a, the trustees conveyed the land there in, I think, the 1870s or 1880s. It's not that long ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, Let's I don't do see it. why we shouldn't be able, and it's been owned by a relatively small number of property owners since that time. So I'm gonna guess that you, it'll be possible to find the original deeds out of the trustees. Okay, good. Gotta see what they say, or what they found the property by. Okay. In the meantime, Thank we'll you. meet over yeah. there and have a look. That way, if, if it is, we can move this along. Okay. Yeah. Happy to meet. Thanks. Thanks, Billy. Okay, now, Devon Yacht Club. I thought we were, we've, yeah, I thought we were done with that. I thought yeah. we were done. Because there was two. You approved the dredging. But this is for the... The, the removal of the sand for the, yeah. from the walkways. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Really, we need sand. Well, we're not taking sand. No. But, no. But they do. They do what they usually do with it. They spread it on the beach. Right. To Correct. the west, or to the yeah, to the east rather. Yeah. Devon does his dredging. Where does that sand go? Goes to the east. But does it goes to the east on the beach? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They send it down to us. Down at Paul. So, Francis, are you going to approve problem. it or yeah. what is no. it? Because it's an application. Mm -hmm. Which one? The Devon? Yes. Yeah. 
Does it spell out the project description there for you, Frank? It's the same thing they always do. No, this well, is new. no, this is no, new. it's actually, this is different. actually, yeah. it's the same thing they've been doing for years. Without they a permit. Ne they never had a permit for it. And they got caught. Okay. So basically what they do is they get an accumulate, accumulation of sand on their boardwalk. They scrape that sand up, they truck it around, and they dump it on the beach. How much sand oh, are we talking about, Jim? 12 yards, maybe. 1,200? Well, no, no, 12. 12 yeah. yards. Oh, 12 they, were, no, they, were, they, had a, they had a machine on the beach pushing sand into the water I saw along the side year. of that jetty. Yeah. yeah. It's very possible. Yeah. Is what possible. they were doing. Was yeah. Was they were grooming the place. At Devon. Yeah. yeah. With this yeah. dredging. Right. Okay. This Part is the dredging. And I'm trying to find this Is other. this on the west side? of their uh very directionally dysfunctional if you're going Pull in up to okay. the parking area yeah. it's on my left on my right <laughs> no, no, on your left. no i'm pull up to the parking uh, lot of devon i'm watching the machine over here okay, okay. on the beach next you on got the, the right. house on the right yep and you got on the to the east pier. towards the fish factory and they're pushing That's sand they've, the beach. they've got permits for that it's the other side of the building where they've been scraping the sand off the boardwalk. This has never been included in the The only thing I see permit. here is... No, I know. no. At first blush, I don't even think, because it's so minimal that it, I mean... But it wasn't minimal. No, but, was, but what they're yeah. saying, it seems to be such a small issue. It's like in-house cleaning. The only thing I'm seeing on here is the dredging. I'm not seeing anything about the walkways. I thought he had amended. I think. No, we got a separate. No, no, we got something that was amended. Well, no, he put in a separate application. I told him to send a letter on, for an amendment, but he put in a whole new application. Okay, well, I'm not seeing that application. Yeah. All right. What I have here is the dredging. We well, seem to have two for dredging. Here you go. Ah. Ah, Jim, Jim borrowed it. Okay. You would think yeah. the would got it off the pile. I wasn't at the last meeting. The guy should have gone through my stuff. <laughs> It's helpful to have the applicant here to answer questions also. I'm surprised somebody's not here. He was here. Well, it wasn't approved. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. grading. grading of sand from the this fixed is, dock. Uh, Devin oh. um, yeah, my GIS is I don't see any cubic yardage. Your deal, man. Do you ever recall getting anything like that in the past from them? No, they were doing it no, without there, a There's nothing about and amounts. And then when so. I went down and I saw what they we were called doing. Jim Walker? Yeah, really yeah, I can. You don't want a rendering from him? I'll call Jim. That's why I've been doing My understanding, and I've been down there when they've done mm -hmm. this stuff, is what happens is over the course of the winter, let's face it, it's north facing down there. The sand blows down the beach. It accumulates all over the boardwalks. They scrape it off. They either haul it around or they push it back towards the water. But when they do their dredging, just keep in mind that sand that they dredge out is piled, Diane, to the east side of that bulkhead, and they do push it off the, onto the beach towards the water, which is what we've given them permission to do. The sand goes back on the beach. Well, do they do any beach fencing down there? Is that something we No, consider? it's not something that beach fencing is really going to solve the, 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 the is, isn't really the solution. Okay. It's just 
you're, you got a place that's facing, it's the funnel. topography, yeah. you know, you're facing the water, what I saw the sand. going on last year was part of their process that, like well, they said, they have done it before, but it was, if it was part of the permit, like a little piece of the process mm -hmm. that I hadn't understood before, and I called the enforcement officers on it, and they went down there. There's no reason a gentleman would stand here this year and say, oh, you're right, Diane, let me give you an application for that. He knows they were doing something they were not allowed to do. So. But this is, this is well, like sand that blows into your parking lot. You clean it off. And well, this isn't in the parking from, lot, but, I mean, but it's yeah, like but that. It's, yeah. yeah. You, you pick it up and put it back where yeah. it came from. Yeah. It's not like we're doing dredging. It's just... Could it be added on to the dredging project? I no, leave it as a separate yeah. permit. No, the guy put it in a separate Okay. Yeah, yeah, if he did it as a separate yeah, permit, let's leave it as a separate permit. We'll get him in here and we'll uh, All right. we want him to ask any questions of it. Yeah, this is going to want to do this annually. So they don't have a contractor because the club will do it themselves? That's, they have that that's what's happened, Diane, that's what's happened in the past, in there. Yeah, I'm sure they're doing it in-house. And that's why I say, I don't know what the cubic yardage is. It's, you're not looking at a lot. You know, no, you but might I saw act, them last like, year, they were, they were pushing it into the bay. Yeah. yeah. Wouldn't it make sense to drive all the way around with a bucket full of sand? Mm -hmm. Well, we could probably do something more thoughtful than just push it into the bay. Yep. It's not like we don't need sand on the beach. Right. Well, I think it's fine. Let's talk to Jim, and then we'll see where we stand. So. All right. right. Table it. Table that. All right. Three Mile Harbor, Vanderveer. Uh, yes. Uh, Bill and I went down and took a look at it. Uh, met with the uh, appli applicant and. Um, the uh, permit that we issued quite some time ago, and the applicant had some excuses to how it fell through the cracks, but the long and the short of it, uh, he had removed approximately 370 linear feet of bulkhead and uh, replaced it with vinyl sheathing. All work was uh, done uh, in place. But Bill, not in kind, right? Because he went with the yeah, it's a plastic sheathing yeah. or vinyl. So uh, having looked at it with Bill, um, it appears to be in order, and I would ask that we issue the permit, close it out for uh, Three Mile Harbor, Three uh, uh, Mile. Can I ask you a question, Brian? Sure. Um, when you approach the property from the harbor, you come down the channel from north to south, yeah. and you look at that shoreline of this marina property, uh, historically there was a lot of uh, debris, like broken off pilings, old dock sections. We saw that, that still are, there. That are kind of half upland and half on the mm -hmm. bottom land. Uh, is, is that something that you feel should be considered here? Bill or is and that I, a separate issue? We're not done uh, working closely with the applicant to uh, address some of those issues. Um, okay. But this, this is a step in the right direction. He did what he said he would do. Uh, but yeah, it needs, um, he needs some hand holding to uh, encourage more improvement. Yeah, yeah, so we'll, we'll be back there. Yeah, all the debris was actually outside this work area. Mm -hmm. It's, um, I think he wants to just sign, I think this is to get the, the thing signed up for the building department more than anything Correct, else. yeah. Are you gonna make a motion? Um, I, yeah, I would make a motion based on going down and seeing the work was completed, assuming that all our, uh, <coughs> uh, permit requirements are met, uh, that we close out the permit for uh, Three Mile Marina. Uh, second. Yeah, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It was kind of a soft eye, but I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, me too. Very difficult it's to get enthused. Yeah. You need some help down there. No All right. Thank you. Payment of the bills. Cook Moran and Associates, $1,750 for renewal of bonds. That's the only invoice we have. Oh, no, we also have DeSuno. Mike DeSuno. 
Uh, DeSuno for the opening pond. the pond, $800. Yeah, it's cheap enough. Yeah. Okay. I'd like to make a motion we pay the bills. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, and we have minutes, September 11, 2017. Mm -hmm. I had um, actually just gotten around to forwarding um, the amendments to Lori this afternoon, late, very late in the afternoon for September 11th and September 25th. Mm. Um, I don't think it's anything substantive, substantial um, that changes the context of the meetings, but um, I would probably feel better if somebody else took a look at them as well, just to be sure. And I'll work on the uh, October 23rd and get that out to her as well. I would like to, yeah. um, if it's realistic, finish up the year, mm -hmm. caught up with our minutes. Mm -hmm. um, so if that's a realistic goal, uh, let's try to you know work towards that. Yeah, you know, it'd be great to get at least through November if we could. That'd be fine. Yeah. So okay. We'll want to work yeah. together on that goal for the next meeting. That would be great. Okay. Yeah, and then it just depends on how the girls are doing in the office, like for Lori to have opportunity to get them down. So. Yeah. But yeah, we could try that. Okay. Good. All right. So we're going to table. Yep. Yeah. Fine. Okay. Report of the clerk. Um, our last meeting of the year is actually December 11th. So that's a, with, with these minutes we're looking at are up to October 23rd, so. Well, you I got to work cut out. Yeah. November when it's done. I just have to send them out. And then there's just tonight. Yeah. Not, not okay. too bad. Good. All right. And, um, I don't know if we want to discuss the organizational meeting. Uh, our meeting night is the 1st of January. Uh, well, the, actually, it's not. The 8th is our first meeting night. Yeah. So do we do the organizational then or before? You can do it the 8th. The 8th. The 8th. Yeah, that's fine. We, we may need a December meeting to continue discussions on deep water, so right. that, that's an important that, discussion. That would be like a special meeting. Right. right. We need that cool. special meeting. Okay. Uh, correspondence. We have emails um, on the um, harmful algal blooms. East Hampton's okay. And then there's the conic estuary stuff that we always get. They have a meeting on December 2nd, Citizens Advisory Committee meeting. What's here, isn't it? That's, that's going to be here, um, 10 o'clock in this room. Going. Yeah, it's yeah, a good discussion. Yeah, no, it looks like a good, good meeting. Yeah. Okay, does so anybody have anything else? I do. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I just happen to be looking at uh, some of the uh, town board meetings today, and I just noted that the one resolution, I think it's number uh, 1210 on November 16th, it was um, a resolution regarding new, new roads that are gonna be put into the highway system based on the, they, they kinda had it a, a highway by use, that the town has been, you know, saying that they have been maintaining them, for, for a while, anyway. These are the urban renewal? You, Some of yeah. them, yeah. But anyway, I did happen to notice, like, just caught my eye, Carlsruhe Cross Highway, which they have down as Carlsruhe Crossing Highway, is a trusty road. Mm -hmm. From Three Mile Harbor to its dead end, it continues through the woods, and it comes out on Springs Fireplace Road. And I've been watching very carefully. There's a new house that's been built, built on that corner, and I've actually been to the building inspector, the prior building inspector, to tell him make sure that their fencing, their pool, blah, 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 is not encroaching into that trusty roadway through there. Mm -hmm. um, so I That's think important. it just warrants a little bit closer look, either by attorney or roads committee, of that list to ensure that there's no other trusty roads on there, and that, you know, we can thank the town very much for their offer, but it's a trusty road, and I don't know if we want to just give it away like that, especially if there's a portion that's still not 
Are they um, proposing to take the entire or only the, of the improved just, portion? Just the improved portion, you know, but that would, if we're gonna give it away, that requires a little more than mm -hmm. just a little resolution. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, yeah. I have a I, quick question. Um, mm -hmm. Where can I find the trustee roads, all the little nooks and crannies, you know, is it in our office? Well, Rick had done an inventory several years ago, like in the 1980s, and then he reiterated, updated it and where a couple is that? years ago. They're in, our, in the files. All right, good. Yeah, I'd like to look at some yeah. of them yeah. on a rainy day, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We have a few and there's Run it by me. I think, I'm, I think I'm about to miss one or two roads. Yeah, a couple yeah, but I that's, but, much know you know, but I just don't want to see any trusty roads inadvertently, no. you know. And then I also did notice that um, they did a resolution with regard to the salaries for the elected officials next year. And again, it's just, you know, it's saying again that, you know, the amounts for the clerk and the two assistant clerks and the trustee, it's, all, it's still flatlined where it was. So I don't know, Francis, if there's anything you can do. I, you know, I noticed well, they were doing a lot of budget modifications oh, and whatnot, that. but. I, I will. Yeah, to see if they can do something for those trustees next when year. When I spoke to them about yeah. the budget, we discussed that and it was mm -hmm. supposed to be included. Okay, yeah. So, so maybe they just need a reminder. Yeah, yep. And the last thing I just wanted to mention was, um, I did get a copy of the, the resolution regarding scallop season. Mm -hmm. And um, partially that's why I was trying to look online. Um, if you go online and you look at the shellfish code, you will find indeed, as this resolution states, that the opening day of scallop season is the third Thursday of, or right. Monday of October. Right. Anyway, if you go to our little shellfish brochure, it tells you that the opening day is the second Monday of November, which is the date we opened it in the resolution. So you didn't have to do the resolution, but we need to c make the brochure, this. That brochure is not a no, but not this an reflects, official record. This is what reflects the record. It's the town code that I've tried to attempt several times to say, guys need to get this updated. Right. right. Mm -hmm. So talk to Ed Michaels, look in our shellfish file. I bet there's got to be the you know our documentation to the <coughs> town board, and there's it says yes, we're going to amend the opening day of scallop season. So it would, the code online will reflect what's supposed to be there. Because we had permanently bumped it to the second Monday of November. Right, but, yeah. but because the state moves it around. We can st still, we can still amend it. But why, why can't annually. we just amend it to one week or two weeks after the state? Why, why can't it just be stated that way in the code? You don't want to give the state that kind of recognition. <laughs> And you how don't. Do, and how does the average why, person you know, know, you know, what the state opening day is? You know, well, the, it's on the DEC website. Yeah, yeah but I mean, you know, well, we would, we would still post. We'd still have to post it. Yeah, it'd still be public. Right. Notice. But generally, okay. I mean, even this year, knowing that when they opened it, our regular opening date still would have been adequate. It would have been fine. We haven't had to amend it. Annually. Last year we had to amend it. Did we? I okay. Yeah. All right. Um, but anyway, so that's just something that we should work on clarifying. And then I did want to just bring up, because I did bring it up once before, but it's this, um, you know, noticing that we did get the email mm -hmm. requesting if we would approve this because we weren't having a regular meeting. Mm -hmm. But here's all everybody's, you know, saying, okay, okay, by email. And this, again, this is not... It's a written this, record. This it's a not, written response from each. But it's not public. Not you didn't discuss it in a public forum, which is so important. This is, at so this I'm just point, this you. is just yeah. administrative. It's done every year. It, it's not always why every does year. It, why but is this something that you feel has to be done? But it's part of the code. In? It's part of the code. You can't do this unless this code tells you you can. This code is what tells. But does the you code this say you have to discuss it in a public forum? That's what we do as elected officials. But this is that's become just an administrative no, I don't process. No, no. To, to, to it's pick like that you, date. you just always need to allow yourselves, allow the public the opportunity to understand and comment on what we're doing as elected officials. Emailing agreements to open the pond, to change the scallop date. I'm just mm -hmm. just, you know you, you will never just, you will never be comfortable with that. We know no. that. No. I find that it's a permanent written record as opposed to people sitting around the table saying aye. 
Look at your minutes. I don't think that's but, but that's somebody record. else. That's what hey she guys, saw. I don't that's think what that's saw. really the point here. I think the point, the only time that, Diane, that this um, weighing in via email has been employed is when we, in the case of letting the pond, the circumstances arose. It was important to do it before the next meeting, okay, because you know what? You want to do these things at the most optimum time and when we've got that weather window to do it in, okay, That's why. and not let a public hearing day um, dictate that because it's it's really a matter of, it's, it's not something that's really subject to public input at that point, it's us doing in-house business of, hey, we're gonna need to open the pond. So well, when, the work when the pond opening <coughs> up, you guys have been discussing was to open it already. in advance, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, one thing you could do, because I realize a lot of times the actual date selected is, depends on the weather and circumstances right there. I think the best way to cover yourself is as that date, as the dates approach, bring it up in your regular meeting. Say, okay, we're expecting in the, in the next, whatever, next week, next two weeks. We're not, we don't know the day right now, but it's coming up. Um, we're intending to do our normal letting of the pond. Discuss that in, in open. Reach an agreement that you're going to do that. The date, the specific date, to be selected. I think yeah, in that regard, that. you're okay. Yeah, yeah. That, we've done that. That's yeah. fine. But what you also have to understand is that your, your annual resolutions gives your clerk the authority to call a special meeting within 24 hours' notice to the town clerk, to the press, right. to the board members, to the public, to ensure that the public knows, okay, this board is going to vote to open that pond. This board is going to vote to change the shellfish code. <laughs> This board is going to vote. This board is going to do something that impacts the public domain which elected you to sit here. Well, the 24 going, hours thing is something that... Going back to the pond no. thing, okay. We've discussed, yes, we're going to open the pond within a certain period. Those emails that went out to open it were based on this is when the contractor is available to do it and we want to go ahead. We've already discussed, yes, we're going to open it. That's, those emails were just to pinpoint the exact day, which we don't make public anyway. No, we don't, but I don't... Rec so maybe it wasn't this last opening, but it was the one prior to that where it had not been discussed and it was just an email, do we want to do this? You know, and it's, there was, was another, the there was another topic as yeah. well. Right. I forget what it was right This one right was now, pretty but, well vetted out. I mean, but we I'm had just, you know, here. We, we had uh, an you know, enormous amount of public discord on this recent opening. You know, it, it built up for six months, Diane. So the, the discussion in the public input from many, many very interested parties, including the neighbors of Georgia Capon, the East Hampton Bayman, local residents that kayak and sail on the pond. So the amount of discord mm -hmm. or you know, discussion what, okay, was, so, but what I'm just, just as enormous. a little advice going forward is that you need to be very careful with regard to the decisions that are made by the selected body. That's all I'm, I'm just giving I you that. I disagree with that. Yeah. Thank you, Diane. Thank you. Yeah, and I, and I just, I'll just add something. I mean, I think Diane's making a good point here that um, the public portion of it is very important. I, I think, you know, you, when in doubt, weigh in the part of having the public discussion about something. I, you know, there will be times, emergency situations, when you can't do that, but I do think that you're you're best protected and look the best if you make sure that any important decisions are made, you know, at a public meeting. Mm -hmm. And if you have to call a special meeting, then you can do that. Mm -hmm. But she's right. Okay. Okay. Do I have a motion? Motion to close. Second. Second. All in favor? All right. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.